we're going to talk about something called exponential functions. Have you ever heard like somebody go, it's growing exponentially? You usually see it like some sort of science dorky math movie that I just love. Yeah. The population is growing exponentially. Oh. Yeah, you've heard? No? I'm the only one who watches dorky, sciencey math movies. Apparently. Yeah, I don't want to show that crap like Made in Manhattan. I wish that crap like Star Trek or <laughs> things like that. Anyway, we're going to talk about exponential functions. If you talk about exponential growth, exponential growth means it's growing at an exponential rate. You need to talk about what exponential even means. You might have heard that if you're, if you're in science class, uh, growth of bacteria. You ever study growth of bacteria? Yes. It starts with like one of them, right? Mm -hmm. One splits into two of them. Two of them split into four of them. Four of them split into 16 of them. Then uh, 16 squared is 256, 256 of them. And then it, 1,020, it keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. You know I did that wrong, actually. Um, so it's multiplied, multiples by two. I squared everything, I think. <laughs> My bad. It should be uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and so on and so on and so on and so on. I think I squared all those numbers really, really, really fast. Uh, anyway, so but it's, it's growing because every time those, those two little bacteria are splitting, right? Same thing, same thing with rabbits. You ever heard? They're breeding like rabbits, uh, which means that the, those rabbits are, are really growing fast because you start with two rabbits, all of a sudden you have, you have more rabbits, and they're breeding, and then you have more rabbits, and they're breeding, and you have more. That's exponential growth. Populations tend to grow exponentially into a limiting factor where the population uh, eats all the food and then things start to die off, or disease comes in and, and kills things off. It's typically exponential growth, or models, exponential, modeled by exponential growth. So we've got to talk about an exponential. Every exponential is of this form. You're going to have b to, now this is going to be weird, right? Because normally we have, we have like x raised to some power, right? x to the one half power will be a square root. x to the third power will be a cubic. x squared is, is a quadratic. Now we have this. We have some exponent that is our variable. b is called a base. It's a number, like two or five or one half. <coughs> B is our base. B does not change for your exponential for whatever I give you. So if I say B is 2, that, that it's going to be 2 for as long as I tell you. Also, it will be greater than 0. It won't be negative. X, our variable, is actually our exponent. So exponentials have a really unique look to it. Instead of having a variable raised to a number, we now have a number raised to a, a variable. That's a weird idea, right? We've got this number raised to something that's changing. <clears throat> so an exponential function is going to look like this for us. We're going to have f of x equals b to the x. Now, I would like to show you a couple graphs to see the difference between these things. I'll put them up on this side of the board so we see the difference between them. We're going to find out how exponentials actually look graphically. So I want to graph two functions. We're going to do them on two sets of axes so we can see the difference here. 3 to the x and 1 half to the x. Hey, first things first, can you identify that these two functions are in fact exponentials? Yes. What's your base here? Three. Good. What's your exponent? X. That means exponential. It's a variable. The other one, what's your base? Good, to the x. So you'd have to have that fraction in parentheses saying the whole thing's being raised to the x power. Now we're going to make these with a table because we have no other way to do it right now. We don't know what these look like. So x, g of x. 
x, f of x. Now typically, we'll pick five numbers. Pick five numbers on each of our graphs. So let's pick, we'll start at the positive side first, so it'll be easier. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And the same thing over here. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Oops, that's not a 2. Now help me out with this. If I say my variable takes the value of 2, what's that mean for my function? How can you represent that? So I plug in 2, what are you going to do? How much is it going to be if I plug in 2 here? It's going to be 9. 2 squared is 9. You follow that? 2 squared would be 9. How about 1? If I plug in 1, how much am I going to get? That would be 3 to the first power. How much is that? How about zero? If I plug in zero, what's three to the zero? One. Yeah, don't tell me zero, right? It's not. It's three to the zero. Anything to the zero power gives you a one. That's interesting right there. Now, here's the cool ones. Ready for the cool ones? Negative one. If I plug in negative one, I'm actually going to do the work here for you. If I plug in negative one, that's three to the negative one. Do you follow that? Three to the negative one doesn't mean negative three. It actually means one over three. With me there? That's weird, right? Is it negative? <coughs> so does a negative number being plugged in actually give you a negative answer? No. Oh, that's strange. That's kind of cool. That's weird. It's actually, it's, it actually here's what this is going to do for you. Check it out. Is this graph ever going to be negative? No. No. Not unless you have a negative in front of that. Then it would be reflected. But no. And negative 2 would be 3 to the negative 2. That's going to be 1 ninth. You see the relationship? Look at 2, 9. Negative 2, 1 ninth. That's cool. It's kind of interesting. If you plot these points, notice that I do have points. I plug this in. I got, let's see, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. If I plug in 2, I got out 9. If I plugged in 1, I got out 3. If I plug in 0, I got out 1. Are you okay with these three points, folks? Nod your head if you are. Feel okay with that? I'm not getting a whole lot of head nods. It's either yes, well, I mean, I did that backwards. It's either yes or no. It's either yes or no. Are we yes or no? Yes. Okay, so these are just our points here. This side of the graph, do you see what it's doing? Is it straight? No, it's going. In fact, if you plug in 3, plug in 3, what's 3 to the third? 27. You'd already be at 27. Plug in 4, what's, four, uh, what's 3 to the fourth? 3 to the fourth. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is? 81. 81. If you plug in the number 4, you're going to be at 81 already. That's, that's off the chart. That's way up there. That's way up there. Is, are you seeing what it's doing? Mm -hmm. It's growing so fast. This side of the graph looks like this. Way up there, really, really fast. Faster than a quadratic. Quadratic's always a power two, right? But this one is saying you're taking a number, you're increasing the power. Man, that's growing fast. That's really fast. Now on the other side though, check it out. Can you plot negative one comma one third? Here's negative one. One third is up or down? Up, but just a little bit. That's like right there, that's one third. You with me? Negative 2, we, we, plug, we got 1 9th. That's, oh, it's almost on the x-axis. Now let me ask you a series of critical thinking questions, okay? Firstly, again, are you ever going to have something below the x-axis? No, not unless there's a negative in front of it. Second one, is this ever going to touch the x-axis? You're going to get really close, but it's never going to touch it. Think about it. 3 is going to be 1 over 27. 4 is going to be 1 over 81. 5 is going to be 1, I don't even know anymore, but you take 3 to the 5th, put it 1 over that, it's going to be really, really, really close, right? But it's never going to touch it. This is called being asymptotic to the x-axis. It has an asymptote here. It's never going to, it's going to be really close, but never touch it. So this side looks like this. It doesn't go back up, that's a mistake. It keeps going along the x-axis, getting really, 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 really close to it. Here's a sound effect for a exponential function. It goes... That's how 
Uh, my, my upper register is a little gone on that one. Try one more time. Lips are dry. Do you hear it? It goes up like that. I want to see what the, the fraction does, and then we'll call it a day. We'll be out of here. Remember that clock's a little bit fast. So if I plug in one half, check it out. Two to the one half, two to the one half gives you, that would be one half squared. Oh, I, I did that backwards. I said it backwards. One half to the second. One half to the second power is going to give you one fourth. Do you see how we're getting one fourth out of that? One half to the first power, well, anything to the first power just gives you that back again. How about zero to the one half to the zero power? One one. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. We're going to get zero comma one again. Can you imagine this for every exponential? If you have an exponential up here to the zero, you're always going to get out one, right? So zero one should be on every one of our graphs unless we shift it around. We'll talk about shifting later. Now, negative one, that's one half to the negative one power. Here's what this does, watch carefully. If you have a fraction to a negative power, what you do is you can flip that fraction, reciprocate it, and it changes the sign of that power. So we would have two over one to the first or the number two. Same thing would happen here. One half to the negative two, you're going to get two over one squared. You flip your fraction, it changes the sign of the exponent. That's an exponent rule that we covered a while back. How much is that going to be? Four. You see the same relationship, right? One fourth four. We'll graph it real quick. If I go over to two, two gives me one fourth. That's right, right there. If I go to 1, it's giving me 1 half. That's slightly higher. If I go to 0, it's giving me 1. That's, that's here. If I go to negative 1, check this out on the board. If I go to negative 1, I'm getting 2. And if I go to negative 2, I'm getting 4. Are you all okay with those points? Do you see what this is doing? Do you see what it's doing? Is it going the same direction as this? So a couple questions, two more questions. Is it ever going to be below here? No. no. Mm -hmm. Is it ever going to touch the x-axis? No. This looks almost the opposite of this. It's almost like a reflection. Different number. That's it. That's our exponentials. This one goes. This one goes. That's the idea of these, these exponentials. Uh, if b, if our base is greater than 1, if our base is greater than one, we'll have this. It will climb. If our base is less than one, it will fall. So whole numbers or fractions greater than one, it's going to look like this every time. Fractions less than one, it'll never be less than zero. It's never negative. It will fall like that. How many people understood these ideas of our graphs here? Good, okay.